and I drove it well last week. But, you know, a lot of times I, I, I think I don't live and die by how I drive it, but I need to drive it well to play well. Playing lessons from the pros, managing your game. Presented by the Ace Group. Oh, Birdie. Oh. <laughs> He's birdied one hole at his home course. <laughs> Relaxed, smooth, and long hitting. Those are just a few words that come to mind when you think of PGA Tour star Fred Couples. Hi, I'm Kelly Tillman. Throughout what we feel is a really special playing lesson, the 1992 Masters champ talks about driving the ball, his new approach to putting, and course strategy. Who knows, if it weren't for his well-documented back problems, how many more championships would this silky talent have amassed? On this day, we caught up with Fred in the Simi Valley of California at the beautiful shadow course at Los Canyons Golf Club. It is a design he consulted on with the legendary Pete Dye. We listen in as Boom Boom warms up and tells us why he does what he does. Well, I used to do it where I'd start real slow and I'd take a sand wedge and I would just kind of just swing, you know, real easy and try and hit balls 60, 70 yards. Yeah. And my teacher, after not seeing him a while, said, wow, you need to get away from that because all that's doing is slowing your swing down. And I said, well, you know, everything kind of breaks and, and doesn't feel very good. So now he's got me actually warming up and hitting more balls with a 7 or an 8 iron, going a little faster because it's a bigger club, but still getting speed into my swing. Cause you know, it is true, it'd be, it, I mean, this is not, I don't have a sandwich, but I'd come out and the first swings would be, you know, and I would just swing like that. And he said, that's fine, but how about really stretching, you know, or laying down the ground for five minutes before you come out and kind of turning even after you've driven to the golf course in your car and then getting away from swinging that slow and easy. That That's a bad rut to get into. And I can relate because what happened is a lot of times I get up here and I just drop the club inside and swing at it. And my whole life, good back or bad back, I used to, I could get the club up here and bring it right back down to the ball and clear to the left. And what this practice routine would be was just come in and do this. And so it's, I really haven't gotten out of it, but I kind of can get the club back down at the ball a little better. But that's my routine. It's it's really I've had it forever, and I've been stiff forever. You know, and people always say, I mean, I don't know if this is right, people always say, well, geez, you must have liked San Antonio because it was real hot. And I always tell them, no, I'd rather play in 45 degree weather and let everyone else be stiff too. So, you know, it's not this idea of hot and humid makes my back feel better. It, nothing really makes it feel better. But, you know, it's just something you live with and you can, you know. This is a pretty good driving hole and it's long. I grant 490 but playing downhill, so you can probably drive it, you know, at least 300. But you, all you want to do is hit this ferry, but it's so long that you've got to hit it a long way. So you don't really want to steer it, but since you're elevated, you can't, you know, stand up here and tee it high and let it fly. But I, I think it's a great hole because it looks tighter than it is. And that's, you know, it should be great. If I could hit a lot more like that. You know, I have a tendency to kind of get the club out and up, but I do get it in a great spot. Um, you know, I used to get across the line as I made much, much bigger of a turn. I get the club over here a little like Larry Nelson, and I would get the club back to the ball extremely square. And I was going at it so hard, I hit a really hard cut. That's what I live. I mean, I would aim this up into the junk, but I knew I was going to cut it every single time. Now my body, I can't do that as much. So I rely on, same thing, getting the club, in a, you know, I have a strong grip, which helps me get the club this way easier, uh, instead of, you know, making a, a, a big turn back away from the ball. 
a la most tour players, but I have a stronger grip so I can get the club cocked much easier. And I think a lot of amateurs have stronger grips, which helps them. So I rely on just making a turn with my shoulder. I'm not so worried about where my lower body goes on the backswing. My problem is a lot of times I don't move the shoulder and I go just like this. And the club looks great, but I haven't moved my upper body. So if I can get that part down, and then once I come down, my lower body is just going as hard as I can to try and get through the ball and then release the club. And on that particular shot, I felt like I tried to hit it 80%, but everything went well, and I got the ball, I got the club to the ball really square, and I was aggressive through the shot. But a lot of times, if you do swing, or as we say, steer it, you don't want to be slowing down through the ball, because any miss will make the ball curve a heck of a lot more. So I always try and speed up through the ball no matter what. I, even if I tee it high on a par five and swing as hard as I can, I still am going through the ball as hard as I possibly can. I've got 186 to the hole, and I just feel like if I hit a six and it goes a little too far, it's going to hit by the pin and probably release, or you know, past the pin, go maybe to the back of the green. So I'm actually taking a little bit of a gamble and I'm going to try and rip a seven and if it comes out I feel like this is the exact club any miss hit is going to come up short which I think is okay for this particular shot since the pins up front and that, that's about as far as I can hit a seven So, and, and my thinking on that is, if I do smash it and it comes up short, there's a swale that it's going to hit and stop, and I've got a fairly easy shot. Anything with a six iron getting a little cute, if I pull it, I'm dead. And if I actually block it, I'm in the middle of the green. But I just feel like, you know, every now and then your eye will say, you know, I think I can hit a harder shot and get it there. You don't want to do that every time, not at all. Some people would say, now, why, why would he hit an 80% drive and then go out of 7-iron 100%? You know, golf's a very weird game, but I want to get the ball and play off the tee. A, I hit the ball far enough with my driver, so I don't need to go out every drive 100%. So I got it in great shape, and on this shot, you know, my eye just said, I just, even though it's a 6-iron yardage, the wind picked up a little bit, I just felt like I could get a 7-iron there, you know, and I, and I did. I hit it very, very well hit it 185 yards, which I don't hit a 7-iron that far all the time. But, uh, you know, I pulled it off, and now I've got, I don't know, 10 or 15 feet for birdie, and I don't think I would have ever got a 6-iron that close. In a moment, Fred talks about putting and the fact that he ran out of good putting strokes at one point in his career. See what he did about it when we come back. Playing lessons with the pros. More than 20 years ago, he started by using a conventional putting grip. He won a major championship and 10 other PGA Tour victories with it. Then he said he just simply ran out of good strokes, so he switched to left hand low. That lasted until about late 2001 when Fred finished outside the top 125 on the money list for the very first time in his career. Nowadays, Boom Boom's trying something different. More on that in just a moment. We rejoin him at Lost Canyons on a tough par three. This is a hole. <laughs> I'd like to just hit a solid shot and get it up on the green with a semi birdie putt, but I'm not looking for a two. That's the way I look at it. I don't know how other people would. And that's going to be either kick right or kick left. Yeah, right in the swale. But, you know, the more you know the course, the more you can be a little more aggressive. You know, like I know where the pin is, and by playing here I know there's a little swale, and you don't really need to miss it to the right, because I believe I've got a fairly easy putter chip from there. I've got this little chip shot, which is all cut grass, and not too big of a slope. And I've, I've chosen to use a 9 and kind of bump it in there this time because... I've got such a good lie. If I had a lie more sitting down a little bit, then I would take the 60 to get some air under it and pitch it up over, there's a couple sprinkler heads here, and hit it that way. But with a better lie, I feel like I can 
come a lot closer, maybe even hole in this shot by, by running it along the ground and not carrying it too far. And that just the lie dictates this kind of a shot. That's a little hard, but that's not bad. And then the other way would be with this little shaky lie. I don't think I could control a nine iron out of it as easily, so I'd try and go a little higher and play it over the stuff. I mean, they're almost identical. That's even closer. But that's just two shots you can try. So on these, this belly putter has kind of helped me keep everything still. Whereas I have the same grip, same length putter, it's just extended, and by even, it's just barely touching my body, but for some reason it keeps me from coming up and moving my head, just like we were talking about with those shorter clubs on staying down, and in the putting it's the same thing, you want to stroke down and through the ball and get it rolling. Now that hung on to go in, but in previous times if I had to come up a little out of it, I probably would have missed it this way to the right, just like that. Felt like a good putt, but when you're coming up, you're not going to hit the putt solid. So this putter with the bellies helped me stay down a little longer and stroke the ball. So even though that didn't go in, it was a good stroke. And that's kind of why I went to it. I figured consistency is what everyone talks about, and this just helps me you know, each and every day putt better. Now, see, I've kind of pushed cut it, but it should be fine. Yeah, it's in the middle of the fairway. But that's, that's going with the strength that I know that I don't want to go left, so my body is going to end up blocking it a little bit and getting it back on line, but I hit it solid enough that it just stayed on line. Our angle here showed down your feet line. Right. Obviously that's not the line that you hit it on. Will you explain your setup? Yeah, well, I, <laughs> I set up everything open. So I'm probably aiming, you know, what looks to some people like, where is he going? But my eyes, I think golf's a game of you know where you where you want the ball to go but my eyes aren't looking over here where I'm aiming so for instance I I think if if I was gonna play it square I'd have the ball way up here well I've got the ball back up for me because I'm aiming so far left but again it's a shot where I'm trying to hit on a certain line so for instance if I was gonna try and turn it to that line I would stand more this way which would look normal to most people, but then my eyes will look out and I want the ball to go out here and hook. I'm trying to get the ball to go this direction, so I'm, I'm going to aim left and I'm going to try and hit it dead straight on that line. And on this particular shot, I more or less was a little late and I blocked it into the middle of the fairway. So it's just, you know, I don't want people to go home and copy me and I don't think, you know, people should copy someone who stands like this. I think the game is feel but I know my swing, and I and I, I know that a lot of times I don't I don't want to get this far open because then it's just a slap. I want to get a little open for me, so then I can go ahead and release. Now that's where I was trying to go the first time. Don't go away. More with Fred Couples and your playing lesson with the PGA Tour star in just a moment. Kelly Tillman. After a strong run at the University of Houston, Fred Couples, much to his regret, didn't take on a teacher until six years into his professional career. At that point, enter Paul Marchand, and he's been with him ever since. Even a classic field player like Freddie needs a second set of eyes from time to time. And as Freddie told us, it's not only important to find someone that's a good teacher, but also someone you get along with. We pick up Freddie back on the golf course, hitting his second shot to a par five. You know, this is 250. There's not much wind now, but it's all carry. But what I, you know, this is a shot where in a tournament you would, I would take the gamble because I know I'm going to, even though I've got a little side hill lie, but I'm going to try and hit it 
uh, right at the left side of the green, and if I smash it and get it going a little right, I can carry um, all the trouble. But from 250, trying to make a birdie or a putt at a three, you know, I've got to go for it. And so that's kind of the shot I have. I hit it awfully low, but it's going to be probably front left. I couldn't see it bounce because of the weeds. That wasn't a great shot, but I missed it on the line where I was looking. So if I had hit it up high and overcut it, it probably wouldn't have carried. But, uh, you know, again, I'll be the first to. It wasn't a great shot, but it's in good shape now. So a lot of a technique. You know, you got a little side hill lie. Um, you know, for, for a lot of people, you know, to realize, and it feels uncomfortable, but it should be the same swing. You want to choke up a little bit, even though I'm trying to hit this a long way, you've got to feel, just like the downhill lie, I like to grip it a little longer to get the balance out. Even if I was more uphill, I would choke up a lot more. And the more you go down, the less you choke up. You've got to figure out, you know, practice. We get all kinds of these lies. Golf is not a game of perfectly flat lies. And so on this one, you know, you've got to get the feeling that this ball is above my feet, maybe, you know, three or four inches. So I'm going to try and choke up a little bit and just go ahead and make my same golf swing. Now that I hit hard, but I hooked it off this lie. And it should be down in front of the green, but you do not want to go to the right. So my body's telling me anything to the right, I've got to drop it. Right up here, I'll make, you know, at best, probably six. So everything, again, is telling me to, you know, get it to the left. Well, only secret, yeah, the only secret on this is for, for people, um, you know, my teacher, Paul, had talked to me a long time ago about this is when I get shots like this is I actually try and weaken my grip. So a normal a normal full shot I'd have a grip like this and when I get a little shorter shot where I've got to get some elevation I actually I don't go to where neutral or normal for most players are but I go much weaker and it helps me get the club swinging through the ball. With a stronger grip I have a tendency to knife it and rely all on spin and when I weaken my grip, for instance, maybe at Augusta or TPC where you've got to get some balls up in the air, I'm able to get the club under the ball, you know, like that and get some elevation on it. So that's kind of the only, you know, the only real thing I can tell anyone is if you do have a strong grip, try to weaken it on these shots to see if you can get a little more feel. You can still spin the ball, but technique, same as any shot, you know. Um, if you go short backswing and fall through, you want to keep your body steady. And if you're a little longer and lazier like I am, you still want to keep your body steady. And it's more from maybe, as they say, 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock. You don't ever really want to go way back and stop. And you don't ever want to go here and, and flip at it. Oh, birdie. Hell. <laughs> He's birdied one hole at his home course. <laughs> Stay tuned for more with Fred Couples. So, for instance, there are swings for me where I swing too slowly. It's very rarely the other way. The playing lessons from the pros, course management tip. Presented found the fairway. He pretty much brought a golf course to its knees with his distance control, his ability to work the ball, and his talent for carving a shot, a la his 84 and 1996 Players' Championship wins and his 92 Masters triumph. We rejoin Boom Boom on the shadow course at Lost Canyons Golf Club where he tells us distance is always a good thing, but there is more to scoring than that. We're just talking about you know how far people are hitting it. But on a peak die or uh, some of the TPC courses, you have to be so precise. 
and uh, on this shot I know there's green left here the pins up front but you don't want to go to the right so it's more of a you know hit or miss shot even though you've got a seven iron so I'm actually gonna try and set up left of the hole and try and work it back to the hole and if it doesn't cut it doesn't cut but uh, length is is irrelevant on a lot of our courses and on this particular shot you want to be you know very very accurate and it's not the hardest shot in the world unless you make it one and I hit it right where I was looking and it should be left to the hole a little bit I think there's really no tricks in golf for me I work on tempo uh, it's my feel around the course I have to have great tempo to hit a little seven iron whether it's a low one or a soft one to the right or left of the hole and I also hit a little tempo shot with my driver if I'm not going to hit it hundred percent like we were talking about if you can't do that then you have to work on something else but I think timing is, is very very important and they work together so for instance there are swings for me where I swing too slowly it's very rarely the other way where I get quick in my swing I'll take that that's fun huh yeah no that's that's that is the fun part because a lot of times that's a shot I haven't been hitting lately as a cut and I hit it well last week and I drove it well last week but you know a lot of times I, I, I think I don't live and die by how I drive it but I need to drive it well to play well especially on par fives you know if I can birdie three out of four that's why Tiger's so good he, he's, he's at 68 before the round starts you know whether you like to hear that or not and other guys might be at 69 or 70 and you give the guy one shot a day you know he's the best player already it's tough to beat I mean Phil Mickelson is a special player and you know his it's unfortunate he'd be the best player in the world but Tiger is I think by far the best player respect from the former number one in the world for the current number one in the world what are the gifts that Fred leaves us with an effective warm-up when to go for it versus when to scale back and use that 80% golf swing. And on more than one occasion, he showed us the importance of leaving the ball in the correct position on the golf course. Join us next time on Playing Lessons from the Pros, Managing Your Game. I don't wear a glove, and any kind of odd feeling just feels very odd. So I have got to have that thing cleaned up. Rain, it's a problem. You know, a lot of times one of the players will say, can I see that? You know, so you give it to them and their hands are sweaty and then they hand it back. I can't hit a shot. Tuesday on the Golf Channel.